The skeleton of chondrocles is cartilaginous. The notochord is gradually replaced by a vertebral column during development, except in hollow cephali. They have tooth-like scales called dermal denticles or placoid scales. Denticles usually provide protection and in most cases, streamlining. Harpagophutator was an eel-shaped fish with almost no scales. It swam with some help from its fins, but also relied on whole body locomotion to move. The fossil record of the Holocephali starts in the Devonian period. The record is extensive, but most fossils are teeth, and the body forms of numerous species are not known or at best poorly understood. Bellancy was leaf-shaped, with muscular fins and a small tail. Such a body plan would allow for a great maneuverability, but at the cost of speedy cruising. Eopteryx was a plump, small-sized chimer-like fish. While the species had specialized spines and fins superficially similar to that of a flying fish, there is much speculation about whether it could glide like a flying fish, or was actually benthic. The first material known from Thalcatus were the prominent fin spines that curved anteriorly over the head of the animal. While similar fossils were found without spine, these remains were described that displayed a high degree of sexual dimorphism. Stethocanthus is best known for its unusually shaped dorsal fin, which resembled an anvil, which may have played a role in mating rituals or used to frighten potential predators. As the spine brush complex is rather a large structure, it seems likely that, in combination with the forward-facing denticles on the structure, it would have produced a drag force during fast locomotion. Because of its large eyes, Copolidus is thought to have lived in the deeper parts of the sea, hunting crustaceans and squid. It has flexible cartilaginous tentacles sprouting from its pectoral fins, their purpose is unknown. Cimmerium was originally thought that it was the female of the Stethocanthus. Edestus grew teeth in curved brackets, and did not shed the teeth as they became worn, only a single row of teeth occurred in each jaw, so the mouth would have resembled a monstrous pair of pinking shears. It might have hunted by using its bizarre array of teeth to vertically thrash its prey, creating slashing wounds. Some fantastic helicoprian pictures will have you believe that this circular saw was actually operated like a buzz saw that it would mow into its prey and carve it up as handily as someone who was cutting wood planks from a tree trunk. Scientists today believe that it was used to push out old teeth and to push prey further down its throat. It survived the Permian-Triassic extinction event. Members of this taxon preserve today some features of elasmobranch life in Paleozoic times, though in other respects they are aberrant. They live close to the bottom and feed on mollusks and other invertebrates. The tail is long and thin and they move by sweeping movements of the large pectoral fins. The erectile spine in front of the dorsal fin is sometimes venomous. There is no stomach and the mouth is a small aperture surrounded by lips. Deltoptychius was similar in appearance to modern-day chimeras, its wing-like pectoral fins that it probably used to glide through the water. Its large eyes allowed it to hunt in deep waters, crushing shellfish between solid tooth plates in its mouth. Chimeriforms also differ from sharks in that their upper jaws are fused with their skulls and they have separate anal and urogenital openings. Silver chimera got its name for the string patterns on the surface of its body, like a monster sewed up by different animal parts, referred to a Greek mythic creature. The male fish has third kinds of teeth, which grow by different organs respectively.
Australian ghost shark has three cone pigments for color vision, like humans, its dorsal fin has a very sharp spine. The spine has been reputed to be venomous, but no serious injuries have yet been reported. Pacific spookfish has a long, narrow snout and smooth tooth plates. One of its two dorsal fins is short in length but tall, while the other is lower and longer. It has been observed that specimens in the Northwest Pacific are considerably darker than ones in the Southwest Pacific. The long-headed eagle ray distinguished by their notched nasal curtain and V-shaped teeth in the lower jaw. It is bent pelagic fish that feed on crustaceans and cephalopods. It is a poorly known species, but generally uncommon and considered endangered. When traveling in deep water, the giant oceanic manta ray swims steadily in a straight line, while further inshore it usually basks or swims idly around. While feeding, the cephalic fins are spread to channel the prey into its mouth. The ray adopts a near stationary position close to the coral surface for several minutes while the cleaner fish consume the attached organisms. Solitary and nocturnal, the Pacific Electric Ray can generate up to 45 volts of electricity for the purposes of subduing prey or self-defense. Its paired electric organs are derived from muscle and comprise approximately 15% of its total weight. Consisting of many thousands of jelly-filled electric plates stacked hundreds high into vertical hexagonal columns. These columns function essentially like batteries connected in parallel. As an apex predator and near shore dimersal food webs, the red stingray plays a significant ecological role. Crustaceans are the most important component of its diet. The venomous tail spine of the red stingray is potentially injurious to humans. Bottom dwelling in nature, the giant freshwater stingray inhabits sandy or muddy areas and preys on small fishes and invertebrates. This species faces heavy fishing pressure for meat, recreation, and aquarium display, as well as extensive habitat degradation and fragmentation. These forces have resulted in substantial population declines in at least Thailand and Cambodia. Shingu River Ray is endemic to the Shingu River Basin in Brazil and prefers rocky bottoms, 